the Kaibab Plateau in northern Arizona can be treacherous, rugged, and remote. Still, early visionaries realized that this special place was worth protecting. Thirteen years before the Grand Canyon received national park status, President Theodore Roosevelt created the Grand Canyon Game Preserve to conserve the unique flora and fauna that live on the plateau, especially the mule deer herd. Over 100 years later, the wildlife in this area is still being protected, now by the Arizona Game and Fish Department and the wildlife manager assigned to the region. In 1992, when I found out I was coming to the Kaibab, I had been awarded this district, a friend of mine that had went through the academy with me told me I was going to the jewel of Arizona. And, and every time I go to work, I think about that statement that he made and just how accurate it was. I think the Kaibab's an incredibly special place. Uh, as a result, I've been here since I started uh, over 19 years now uh, with no plans to leave or go anywhere else. Game management in Arizona is a big job and the men and women who take on that responsibility cover a lot of big territory within management units all across the state. The Kaibab Plateau is in Unit 12A and covers over 1,200 square miles north of the Grand Canyon with elevations ranging from 5,000 to 9,200 feet. It has very few facilities and the closest town is in southern Utah, but being assigned here does have its perks. Yeah, I get to go to lunch on the edge of the Grand Canyon uh, when I feel like it. Uh, the neat part is I typically have it all to myself. I'll drive out to one of those points and, and have lunch for a half hour, 45 minutes, and, and just soak in the splendor of, of, of northern Arizona, and, and it's really hard to beat. While this area is beautiful, it is also home to some of the largest mule deer in the country, and hunters who are lucky enough to draw a tag for this unit usually don't go home disappointed. The job of managing this huge tract of land with its wide variety of species and habitat can be a challenge. Well, the Kaibab's an interesting district for a wildlife manager in that uh, it has a lot of notoriety associated with its deer herd. And as a result, uh, a lot of the things that I do, other wildlife managers in the state don't do. Uh, we do a lot of habitat work up here for the deer herd. Uh, we're doing uh, constant studies. Uh, a research branch of the Arizona Game and Fish Department's up here looking at habitat quality and forage availability. Uh, we're catching deer every spring and looking at their health coming out of the winter. Uh, we've got the check station uh, where every deer hunter on the Kaibab has to check out when they harvest a deer. And so there's a lot of things going on in the Kaibab that don't happen in the rest of the state. Well, the deer capture presents a pretty neat opportunity for somebody that's interested in wildlife and wildlife work and that, that it's hands-on work. You're actually handling the animals, uh, which, which really is a rare thing uh, in this day and age. I think people often assume we're, we're hands-on with the critters in the hills all the time, but we're really not. Uh, we observe them constantly, uh, but, but actually hands-on work where we're handling the animals and taking measurements and things of that nature is a really r relatively rare occurrence. Batteries are all white right now. Wildlife managers are considered the face of Arizona Game and Fish because they interact with the public more than most employees have the opportunity to. On this day, Todd is patrolling during a Miriam's turkey hunt where he gets to know the hunters in the field, something he obviously enjoys. One of the interesting things in Arizona is that most of the hunting public and most of the public in general that we contact are really happy to see us. Uh, I think a lot of states, game wardens, aren't really looked upon as favorably as they are in the state of Arizona. And, and I think so, that has something to do with the fact that our people have some life experience, they've gone to college, um, as a result they're a little bit older, and, and they interact with people a little bit better. But it's, it's, it's really heartwarming to see people smile when you pull up their camp and invite you into camp. Uh, I regularly get offered cups of coffee, I regularly get offered meals. People want to spend time with us. And I think that's because we know a little bit about wildlife and wildlife habitat and we can talk to them and help them uh, do what they're doing. And, and as a result, the, the, the support by the Arizona public for us in the field is, is really, I think, probably unparalleled in North America. While wildlife managers in Arizona are commissioned law enforcement officers, they're also required to hold a college degree in a wildlife science or closely related field. This allows them to not only enforce the law and assist the public, but to develop and create habitat improvement programs specific to their management areas. 
Well, in 1996, we had a, an incredibly large fire on the west side of the plateau in the Mule Deer Winter Range. It burned up about 56,000 acres. And the year following that, it occurred to me that it might be an important thing to start uh, looking at efforts to rehabilitate some of that burned range and, and try to get uh, some forage species back on the ground, food for deer, uh, and, and try to restore some of the wildlife habitat that had been lost in that fire. And of course, Mother Nature will do that on her own. Um, but, but we as humans are a little more impatient and we'd like things to happen a little faster. And so in, in 97 I sat down and I mapped out about 25,000 acres of, of various habitat treatments. Um, things like seeding in places that had burned pretty severely. Uh, I also looked at some areas where things hadn't burned, where we had really thick stands of uh, pinyon juniper trees that were kind of choking out the, the, the vegetation that underneath them and going in and removing some of that overstory to release those plants and give them a chance to thrive. Uh, and also looked at uh, some of the old habitat treatments that had been done historically, primarily for cows, um, but had turned into really, really good winter mule deer range. And we went back into several of those and restored them to the condition they were in in the 50s. Uh, as part of that plan, we also built, uh, we've built so far eight new waters and we have five more new ones to put in. And so we're looking at 13 new water sources on the west side of the Kaibab for wildlife. Uh, really good water distribution, almost ideal. And so I think uh, some of the things that we've accomplished in the last decade have really, really been productive. Maintaining those water sites is also part of Todd's job. But it's just one of a hundred things he does each year to make sure the wildlife in the Kaibab will be here for a long time to come. And I take personal pride in the fact that uh, some of the things that, that we're accomplishing on the Kaibab are, are going to be left. Uh, it, it may sound corny, but I think of them as a sort of legacy, something that 50 years from now my grandkids could come back and say, you know, my granddad, he, he did that, and, and it's here for us now. And, and I think that is, is something that, that not many people get to accomplish in their careers in America anymore. And I think having that legacy is an incredibly important thing to me. The job of a wildlife manager in Arizona is a unique one, and not for everybody. But after 20 years in the field, it is still the perfect job for Todd. Well, I think the wildlife manager job in the state of Arizona is probably the best job in the world. It's an incredibly diverse job. Uh, many people aren't aware that, that a large portion of our job is not law enforcement. Most people immediately assume that uh, what we do is primarily law enforcement. And really that only constitutes about half of our duties. Uh, we, we get to survey wildlife populations, we develop uh, hunt recommendations that result in the permit levels uh, for hunt tags that people apply for. Uh, one day you may be sitting in the office working on paperwork and the very next day you're in a helicopter flying over the Grand Canyon looking at desert bighorn sheep. It's really, really a dream job. Uh, I, I, I regularly tell people that no hick kid from northern Michigan should have ever expected to get to do this for a living. And I believe that.